Hi, I'm Adrian Thomas, wildlife gardener at the RSPB. We set some homeowners the challenge of what they could do in their outside space to make it better for them and for wildlife. They had a budget of just £250 and a little bit of help from me. Gardens need to work for the whole family. It needs to be somewhere where the kids can play and somewhere where the adults can relax. And the good news is that you can combine a wildlife friendly garden with a family friendly garden really easily. Ben, Erin, here we are in your blank canvas, which is fantastic because it means that we can really make a difference. We had the chance to have a, a little online consultation, yeah. uh, which, which was great. You've got some clear ideas about what you want. I think in my eyes it needs to be maintainable. I don't want to be out there every day doing little things to it. I want it to just kind of thrive on its own. Bringing sort of countryside into our garden would at least sort of feel like you're a bit more connected to it. I would really like a tree, like a small tree, like a crab apple tree. Crab apples are one of the best for nature because they offer nectar, pollen and fruit. I think we like the idea of a nature pond, don't we? We do. This is my special tool for laying out a pond because I think it's always really useful before the first dig is, is made to see where the pond's going to sit and have yep. a look at it from different positions. That is 40 minutes digging between the two of us and I think we're as, as deep as we need to go in a pond of this size. And now we're ready for some sand. Feels like another bag is needed. It does. To prevent any tears in our rubber pond liner, we first need a sheet of protective underlay. And now it's time for the rubber liner. And finally, another sheet of underlay, this time on top for extra protection. So I presume tap water's okay to fill the pond up with? In an ideal world, we'll be using rainwater, but for these purposes, very few people have got enough stored rainwater to fill a pond. What I'm trying to do is leave enough depth of turf where it's over the liner, that's yep. enough depth for the soil to actually support the grass so the grass can stay alive what will happen is that the grass will probably start to grow down towards the pond and that will really camouflage the, the edge of the pond yes and what i'm going to do is just put a little depression in it there and the theory being that birds coming in for a drink will actually oh, yeah. use that this was marsh marigold, one of the most beautiful native pond plants. Bright yellow flowers in spring. Yep. And it's an emergent plant, so it needs to be up to water here with just the plant sticking out. So it's okay. finding a bit of the, the marginal shelf that will hold it su successfully. This is where the transformation really starts. <laughs> so what we've got here, they're bee-friendly plants. They're in peat-free compost, which is really important. They're in recycled plastic pots, really important too. And I bought most of them in threes because what bees really like is to see a clump of a type of flower. Okay. And they'll also okay. create more visual impression for you. Erin, arrange away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pop this one here. And that feels like a full border. Yeah. Time to put 
pièce de résistance or <laughs> crab apple tree in any garden you can have a tree uh, and this one I think is going to be perfectly sized for, for this garden it'll have pink flowers in spring and then red fruits in autumn Adrian, this is amazing. I can't believe we've managed to do it all in one day. I know, it's brilliant, isn't it? And the exciting thing is now watching it grow, seeing it look even better, and seeing the wildlife that comes to visit. The action starts now. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Brilliant. Thank you.